Hey guys, welcome to Allotronics. In this video, we are going to see how this microwave frequency doubler works. We are going to see the principles of operation, the circuit description, how I prototype it using my favorite copper tape technique, and at the end, we are going to see it working and make some measurements. Take your coffee and let's go! So guys, the principle of operation of this design is harmonic generation by a saturated amplifier and bandpass filtering. The goal of the design is to generate a 5 GHz signal from a 2.5 GHz input signal. This is why it's called a frequency doubler because it will double the frequency at its input. In just a moment, we are going to see how we constructed this design here using microstrip techniques. And this works, guys, using an amplifier, a BJT transistor, a very high speed one here, that amplifies the input signal until saturation. So this amplifier here is working with a such high gain that it will be working in compression it will be working over the 1 dB compression point. When the amplifier is compressing, when the amplifier is working on the large signal behavior, the output will be rich in harmonics. Because what really happens when we see the signal on the time domain is saturation of the signal, is distortion of the input signal. So the input signal is a 2.5 GHz sinusoidal signal, a very clean signal, okay? Has very clean spectrum. 2.5 gigahertz and the BJT transistor amplifier has so much gain that the collector voltage will be very similar to a square wave to a very distorted sinusoidal signal so this collector voltage here is rich in harmonics we have the harmonics of the signal 2.5 5 gigahertz 7.5 and as the goal here is to double the frequency we need to filter out the second harmonic so this Bandpass filter here is a bandpass filter over the second harmonic. Now at the output we have double the frequency with a signal that's phase coherent with the input because it is an harmonic of the input signal. So guys here you have the microstrip prototype using copper tape over a double phase FR4 PCB. The input signal enters the circuit here on this SMA connector and this is the output connector after the band pass filter we can see here. So the path of the signal is input connector, we have an input match network, AC couple, the transistor is here, here you can see a via, we have a microstrip bias T that bias the transistor here and isolates the 5 GHz output from the DC bias and the collector of the transistor is connected to the input of the band pass filter. We can see the input bias here, here the transistor, the emitter of the transistor is connected to ground, here you have the two bias resistors, this is a quarter wave stub at 5 gigahertz and this is also a quarter wave stub in this direction here and this forms the bias T to bias the transistor with DC so this is the collector only at DC and this node here, the collector of the transistor is actually isolated from the input DC voltage here through this quarter wave transformer here. The bias resistors are here and here we have the output filter guys. We can see that we have three half wave resonators. So these are half wave resonators at 5 gigahertz and they are edge coupled so we have quarter wave couplers here to couple the input signal and half of each resonator is coupled to the other. And this structure is a band pass structure because it will resonate at the half wave length of the resonator. Here in the output another quarter wave coupler here is coupling this, the energy from the resonators to the output connector. This small copper tape soldered here guys is very interesting because this is the turning. I tuned the filter to get maximum output power using this small piece of copper tape here. Guys, people always ask me how to learn about microwave stuff and these microstrip structures. Guys, you can simulate, there's a lot of software to simulate this, but the best way to understand what's really happening is to use copper tape over a PCB, guys. You can turn, you can put stubs in different places to see the response, to see when you are going to have a notch response, a bandpass response 
and you can play around. If you pass one week playing around with copper tape over a PCB, you learn a lot more than with simulators. And guys, this technique here is very interesting because you can make vias drilling a hole on the PCB, a three to four millimeter hole, and soldering copper tape on the bottom so now you have the ground plane on the bottom and you can fill the hole with solder so now you have a strong via a very good connection a very low inductance connection to ground and this is how i'm doing my vias here you can see i'm designing a microwave sampler and i'm using the same technique and here we have a via so my tip for you guys is to solder some sma connectors in different places place some strategic placed vias around the board and now you can play around this using this PCB, a microwave breadboard. Guys, before we go to the bench, let's take a look on the full circuit diagram to understand how it works. 2.5 gigahertz at a level of 0 dBm enters the base of the transistor. Here is a very high speed transistor with a very high transition frequency and they have an input match here, the fifth ohm signal here to the base of the transistor. How I designed this match? I only soldered this tub where I got the maximum power. No simulation needed, very little calculations, okay? This capacitor AC couples the input, isolating the bias voltage of the base. We can see the transistor is biased by these two resistors here in series to bias the base and the collector resistor here. And this combination will bias the collector with 10 milliamps, okay? Using 8 volts as the power supply. 8 volts is a very common voltage for this kind of stuff here. You can see I'm using two resistors in series and this is to help isolate more the RF signal here from the base. If you have space, you can also put a very thin microstrip in between the two resistors to act as a little inductor to help to isolate the collector from the base. So guys, we can understand this bias T seeing that this open end here will become a closed end here, so a short here, okay? This short is transformed to the collector as an open. So the collector of the transistor is not seeing this short here at 5 gigahertz. So this bias T also works as a bandpass selective network because the frequency of higher gain of the amplifier will also be at the output frequency. Here at the collector of the transistor where we have the very high distorted signal, we place our bandpass filter made by three half wave resonators. Commonly, the couplers are placed closer to the resonators to better couple the energy and we place a little more space between the middle resonator to have a looser coupling and a narrow bandpass response. And the output is directly taken from the output quarter wave coupler here and goes to the SMA connector. So guys, to test this design, I prepared this setup here. We have the notebook connected to a spectrum analyzer that goes up to 6 GHz, so we can see the 5 GHz output of the circuit. We have the circuit here, the power supply for the circuit is right there. At this moment, it is supplied by 5 volts, and you can change the supplying voltage to change the biasing current and see the effect on the spectrum and on the output power. And we have the signal generator connected to the input of the circuit, so we can change the input power to see the output power, to get data to conclude about the power conversion loss, compression point, linearity, and so on. All this data is available on the article on my website, and the link is in the description of the video. There you can see the graphs of power input reflection co coefficient and all of that. So guys, first let's apply a zero dBm input signal. And look at that, we can see the input leakage here at 2.5 gigahertz and a very strong output signal of 5 gigahertz. The output signal is here guys at negative 5 dBm. So we are entering with 0 dBm from signal generator and the output is negative 5. So even working with an amplifier, an active device, we have loss here. We have an insertion loss of 5 dBm from input to output. We also see that we have leakage from the input signal here 2.5 and the leakage is at negative 35 dBm. So relative to this 5 gigahertz signal we have 30 dBc of isolation. Actually it's a pretty nice isolation guys. What also is very interesting to see and that we have 
other spurious signals near the main signals here and they don't seem to be harmonics of the signal because they are not at any multiple of 2.5 or 5 gigahertz this tone here is probably an oscillating mode of the full microstrip structure here the output signal guys we can see that we have some up converted tone here probably another spurious that is up converted to the 5 gigahertz output very interesting indeed and it's really interesting to see that a 1 db increase in the input power will generate a 2 db increase on the output power because this is the second harmonic is the square term of the polynomial representation of the collector voltage so as this coefficient of the polynomial is square we have this two times relation on the db scale this relation will occur up to the saturation of the circuit here near 1 2 db here you can see that we are entering saturation we can also change the bias in voltage and we can see that we have a best point where we have the maximum power and increasing the voltage over this best point we can get lower power guys so more biasing current can mean lower power because now with higher current the transistor can have more headroom for oscillation and the distortion is less so one big thing that can be optimized to have maximum output power is also the collector current this is why i draw on the diagram 8 volts but now on the test i'm seeing that 5 volts is the best point for maximum power using a directional coupler like this we can measure the return loss of the input guys we can also optimize guys the input impedance changing the collector voltage and as you can see on my article link in the description you see that the best output power is not when the collector current is changed for the best return loss this is very interesting guys because this is a non-linear circuit input impedance output power is a trade-off here and we can optimize the collector current of the transistor to best match the input or to maximize the output power i made the measurements of the return loss using this directional bridge we already saw here on the channel in the video about impedance matching you can look clicking in the balloon right here so guys i hope you enjoyed this video if so please subscribe to the channel give it a thumbs up send to your friends and i see you in the next video of all electronics